So this question says, which expression is equivalent to 42a over k plus 42ak, where k is greater than zero? And then we have all these answer choices that, have, that involve a and k as well. So there's two ways to solve this in my mind. One is simplify. This is definitely, definitely has to simplify um, set up for a question or format. Simplify questions are typically very short, somewhere between one and three lines long, and contain either an equation or, like in this case, an expression. So I can definitely simplify that. Another strategy, however, is to plug in your own number. I know that I can use that strategy because the question itself contains variables, A and K, and so do the answer choices contain variables, A and K. So I just have to figure out, like, what number do I want to choose for A, what number do I want to choose for K, and then go to work on plugging in those numbers. Let's do both. Let's do both ways. So let's see which way is faster, which way you prefer. So in terms of simplification, I have 42A over K equals, I'm going to call, I'm sorry, not equals, plus... I'm going to call this 42ak over 1, just to make them both fractions. And then I'm going to say, well, in order to add fractions, I have to have a common denominator, which means I'd have to multiply this right fraction by k over k to make it have a denominator as k like the first fraction does, which would turn this into 42a over k plus 42ak squared over k. Now that they have common denominators, I can just add them together by combining the numerators and keeping the de denominator the same. So my new numerator will be 42a plus 42ak squared all over k. Okay, now I don't see that as an option. It's definitely not choice A. It's definitely not choice B. It looks similar to choice C, but what happened? We pulled out like a common factor there. It looks like we pulled out a common factor for D as well. So let's simplify this further. What is the greatest common factor between 42A and 42AK squared? Well, that greatest common factor would be 42A. Now, what do I have to multiply 42A by in order to recapture this first term? Well, that would be 1. I have a plus sign here, so plus. And what would I need to multiply 42a by to capture the second term, 42ak squared? Well, that would just be a k squared. Okay, so that's how you do that. This is all over k. So now do I have that answer? I do. It's actually choice D, right? The order of k squared plus 1 is different than what I have, but it doesn't really matter. 1 plus k squared is the exact same value as k squared plus 1. So... That works, and therefore choice D is correct. Okay, so that's the simplification method. Let's show you the plug in your own number method. All right. So again, I notice I can use P on or plug in your own number because I have variables in both the question and answers. So I'm going to say, as I usually do, I like to keep these small. I'm going to say A is 2 and K is 3. And if I need to change that to make this a nicer fraction here, I will. Right, so if I have 42 times 2 over 3 plus 42 times 2 times 3, 42 times 2 is 84, 84 divided by 3, let's see what that is in my calculator really quickly, 84 divided by 3 is 28, so this goes to 28, and then 42 times 2 is 84, and then times 3, again to my calculator, 84 times 3 is 252. This becomes 28 plus 252, and that is 280. Okay, so I know that based upon plugging my numbers in, A equals 2 and K equals 3, I get a value of 280 from my question. So now the next aim or the next uh, part of the process with plugging in your own number is to plug those exact same numbers into the answer choices and see which one matches the 280 that you got when you plug them into the question. So here, what am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out, is it true that 84 times 2 divided by 3 is equal to 280, right? And we can see right away, right, 84 times 2, that's eight, 168. And then we're going to divide it. We're going to make it even smaller. So no, that is not equal to 80. So that's gone. How about here? 84 times 2 times 3 squared over 
3. So first of all, that squared will cross out and this 3 will cross out. So I can go to my calculator and say, well, what is 84 times 2 times 3? 84 times 2 times 3. I get 504. Right, so that's also not equal to 280, so it gets crossed out. Choice C, 42 times 2 times 3 plus 1 inside brackets, all divided by 3. So that'd be 84 times 4. Once we, com once we combine those like terms or combine the terms inside the bracket, all divided by 3. So I'll go back to my calculator. 84 times 4 is 336 divided by 3 makes it even smaller down to 112. So again, that is not equal to 280. So that's gone. And then lastly, we have 42 times 2. I'm going to put a bracket here and say that's not 2. 3 squared plus 1 all over 3. So this becomes 84 times 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10. So 84 times 10 divided by 3. So I get 84 times 10 is 840. I divide by 3, and what do you know? I get 280. And that's how I would know that choice D is the correct answer. So two different methods, um, the traditional simplification, but then also this plug in your own number. So I think both of them are just as good. You can choose whatever one you like. But again, plugging your own number will typically work whenever there's variables in the question and answers. Um, and simplifying will always work, but the question is if you know how to simplify, right? So plugging your own number is a great strategy to use when maybe you don't know how to do the traditional math.